Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to Quilt Along number 26 on the Free Motion Quilting Project. Today, James and I are in the studio together and hanging out working on a quilt called Emergence. And she's gone through a lot of changes over the last couple of weeks. And the last thing that needs to happen for her to be finished is to be painted. What? Uh, yes, painted. I've got to paint some colors painting on it. Painting a quilt? Painting a quilt. And especially yeah. after she's been completely finished and quilted is kind of a different technique and it's a little scary. So I look forward to sharing this with you on the project today. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> so the first step to painting a quilt is of course deciding what areas you want to cover with paint. And for this particular quilt, um, I knew that I wanted areas to be darker. I wanted her body to be like a lighter color more white, more vibrant, so that way she stands out against this background. And of course I've also hand uh, machine appliqued all this hair in place. So I really wanted to tie that together with um, the rest of the quilt as well. So uh, the first step anyway is uh, I always have kind of a scrap of fabric and this is also my press cloth. And I just lay this out so that if I end up laying my uh, you know arms, resting my arms on the side of the quilt then I'm not going to risk getting paint on an area I don't want paint on. Uh, it's also a nice place to lay tools. Like these are just dry paint brushes. As for the paint that I'm using for this particular technique, I am using uh, Lumineer, a Jacquard Lumineer textile paints. And you want to give them a good shape before you get started. Of course, there's a lot of other paints that you could use for this kind of thing. I've also used Shiba paint sticks. But when you're getting into these really teensy tiny tight spaces and in here. Um, that's going to be a really tricky thing to apply with paint sticks and I would end up having to do a lot of masking tape taping. Um, this textile paint is a lot more liquidy and goopy than uh, Shiva paint sticks and so I can apply it with a paintbrush much more like painting a canvas. So it's a little bit easier to deal with uh, the little tiny uh, tight areas. So that's why I've chosen this particular paint for this particular quilt. And of course I've given my paint a nice shake and I use just a little, um, like this is a lid to a container, you know, one of those cheap lead containers, and I just take off the cap first and I make sure that it's here on this so that way I know where all the paint is, all the liquid is, and it's not going to get jumbled up, it's, I'm not going to knock it off or knock it over. And then the main pot of the paint where all the goopy paint is, I put that off off the table so it's no risk of anything being knocked over. So then I'm just using a cheap, very tiny paintbrush and I just get a little bit of paint and start applying it to the area that I want it to go in. And it is a very good idea to take a little bit of time before you get started and paint uh, the color that you think is going to work over the same color fabric just to test it out and make sure that that is actually the color that you want and the effect that you want. <laughs> because once it's on the quilt, that's it. Um, covering up this, particularly this uh, Lumineer paint, uh, it doesn't seem to want to be covered up too easily. It's a little tricky once it's on the quilt. Um, you pretty much are stuck with it. So you have to know before you get started that this is what you want and how you want it to go. So these big areas are pretty easy, like I'm just going to come down this dark line and fill that in completely. Uh, but there's another technique I wanted to show you today, and that is I'm kind of outlining. So uh, this area in the outline of her body, what I'm doing is just simply running a line, a very thin line, kind of right next to that, and I'm also kind of dry brushing. There's very little paint on my paintbrush, and I'm just kind of scrubbing it back and forth along that edge. And that's kind of expanding her outline just a bit. What are you doing, James? You're being silly. <gasps> Five-year-olds and quilt painting, I guess, are a little too boring. But anyway, <laughs> so I just expand that a little bit. And then I darken in just a bit. So it has a very nice kind of feathered appearance. And that's just something special I'm doing for this particular quilt. My other quilts, I've mostly just darkened the area, painted it fully with this particular color. Um, this is something I'm doing for her because I wanted her outline to stand out a little bit more. You can already see the area I filled and finished with her hands is standing out so much better against that background. And that's really the goal here. Um, 
paint, especially on an art quilt, can really make or break the surface. I mean, it really can draw more attention and focus to a particular area and make it look a million times better. Uh, it, you know, I've also had the reverse. I've also had in a situation where I kind of messed up a quilt a little bit with the paint, but uh, managed to get it fixed and, and um, still finished it and was, you know, enjoyed and liked the finished appearance. But it is something that you need to test. And let me show you my, um, whenever you stop painting, make sure everything ends up on that little tray so that way you don't walk away from it. How do I be in the camera? You can't be in the camera right this second because it's pointed at the quilt. So this is um, just a piece of black fabric, same black fabric that was actually the background of this quilt. And I've taken all the colors of this paint that I own and simply painted a little swatch and let it dry so that way I know exactly what those finished colors are going to be. So when it came time to picking the color to go on this goddess, it was a really easy choice because I knew that that was really kind of the effect that I was going for. So that's a really good idea too. If you start collecting these paints and they have them in like sample packs and, and kits and stuff uh, of like smaller containers, that's a really good idea for getting several different colors to play with all at once. Uh, but you need to know what their effect is. Uh, like I said, I, I did mess up one quilt in particular called Hot Cast because I painted a section. Basically, here's, here's what I did, I, how I messed up. I painted a section with a particular color and I thought I liked it. I put it on the wall and realized eh, it wasn't quite right, so I ch wanted to change that color. Well, that section had only been partially filled with that paint. Everything else that I covered with other colors didn't have the same effect because that area had two layers of paint. Everywhere else had just one layer of paint. So um, this, this is one of those things that once you start, like now that I've started filling her body in with this color in this way, I'm going to have to fill in the whole section with these colors and the paint in this particular way. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. No quilt painting is not necessarily going to be for everybody, but it's a lot of fun. It is kind of time consuming. Um, but, you know, turn on an audio book. Uh, it's a little bit of a different, you know, kind of thing to do. But it's a lot of fun um, just to have a few days off the sewing machine to relax. If you're kind of uh, in the mood for a little bit of break from sewing and quilting, then this can be a nice, you know, pull you out of the sewing room kind of thing. You will need to have tables, of course, set up so that your quilt can be stretched out over the surface and then you have more than enough room to spread out so that way, you know, she doesn't end up having to be folded up in the end of the day. When it comes to sealing this paint, this is textile paint and it is pretty much sealed once it's done. But just in case, just to make sure that it's there and bonded forever, I go in with textile medium. And uh, this is the textile medium I use. It's Delta Cream Coat Textile Medium. I find this online. I just have to order it online rather than finding it in stores. I just can't find it anywhere. Uh, basically, I just pour it into a small container, just like the paint, and paint it over everything once everything's dry. And basically, once this is dried, that paint is totally 100% waterproof. I can wash the quilt if I want to. Of course, this is an art quilt. I'm never going to throw her in the wash machine, but I can do a soak in my bathtub after I've done the Delta Cream Coat, and I feel confident that the paint's not going anywhere. I can roll the quilt. I can store it. All that kind of stuff. Uh, once I, this is on and dried, I feel, pretty much feel like the paint's there. It's bonded to the fabric, and it's done. So I hope that this has helped you understand how to paint a quilt and hopefully give this so a try. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you'll give quilt painting a try. It's something that I'm working on right in the second in the studio and I really enjoy sharing with you exactly what I'm working on at the time simply because everything's already set up, it's already out, and this is what I am actually actively working on. So it makes things a lot easier for me to show you uh, what's actually really on my mind, what's actually really going on around here. Uh, and of course, it's not always easy to shoot with a five-year-old, but he is a wonderful, fun uh, kid to have around and have in the studio. And that's another thing is that sometimes quilting uh, with family in the house can be distracting. It can be difficult, and especially in the summertime, it's a challenge. Uh, but it's one of those things that learning how to share this with our family, even the younger members of our family, is something really important. So that way we pass it on and share it with another generation so that there will be many quilters to come. 
So I hope that you'll link up your blog post, ask any questions that you have about free motion quilting, any of the designs that we've learned so far, or any other artistic techniques that you're interested in. Uh, artistic techniques you know, are definitely on the other side of the quilting world. It's definitely not traditional and it's not something you're going to put on a bed, but it's a lot of fun and it can definitely produce different effects on a quilt and many, many interesting things can come from it. So hope you'll give it a try and until next time, let's go quilt or paint. If you're interested in seeing more photos of emergence, including close-ups of the effect of the paint over the surface, please check out the Free Motion Quilting Project at freemotionproject.com.